Hi, I'm Josh Harris, Associate State Director of Advocacy and Outreach with AARP Illinois. Welcome to the 2021 Gallery Gachard Virtual Trolley Tour. AARP Illinois is proud to sponsor the Virtual Trolley Tour as a celebration of Bronzeville's vibrant community. Gallery Gachard and its partner galleries are essential to preserving the cultural heritage of Bronzeville. We'd like to take a minute to remind all Illinoisans that AARP Illinois fights every day to advocate for affordable housing, affordable health care, community safety, and community development. Just this past year, we launched our multi-year Disrupt Disparities Initiative, which focuses on advocating for laws to bring about necessary change to older adults of color all across the state. Already in 2021, we're proud to report legislative wins that expand retirement access to more than 1 million more Illinois residents, expanding telehealth options, which we know were so critical during the COVID-19 pandemic, expanding property tax relief for older adult homeowners, and creating more diversity on the Illinois Broadband Advisory Council. By continuing to support communities in this way, AARP wants to ensure that residents can age in place in multi-generational communities where their history can be celebrated. To learn more about AARP, visit aarp.org il. Enjoy the show. Hi and welcome to another virtual trolley, um, virtual trolley tour here at the Phantom Gallery Chicago Network. Our November's exhibition and show will feature artists from Berlin. They are with the Ocean Between Four exhibition that will be produced by curator and director and founder of the International Art Group, Mariana Bushbach. Hi, Mariana. Hi, Alva. Hi. Hi. You want to tell us a little bit about your exhibit? Um, the Ocean Between is a uh, almost annual exhibition that takes place generally in Germany, but uh, as an international art exchange, we are uh, grateful and excited and to present it here at the Phantom Gallery in November as well as a traveling show. And we are presenting excerpts of the show that we did in the summertime in Germany. And we, had, we toured the show from Hanover to Berlin this year. There were two exhibitions, one at uh, Gallery Bonnicotch, Hanestrasse 8 in Hanover. And the other one was International Mail Art Exhibition at the Old Airport. During these exhibitions, we had two performances with uh, uh, excerpts of uh, dance performances by Elizabeth Adler, who came all the way from Chicago. She is the director of the Dance Theater, and she performed in both cities. And then we are, I performed with the, Chicago, with the Scharnier Theater, which is a puppet theater with big masks. Uh, I performed a special dance called the Three Totems with uh, our mass theater group in Hanover. Uh, the Three Totems I created this, this summer to, uh, to heal our world 
which is deeply affected by the pandemic, symbolize three different stages in our uh, conscience. One of them deals with the, uh, the, the nature, the natural environment. One of them deals with the universe. And one of them deals with humanity. And uh, the nature was featured by the character of the coyote. And the universe was uh, featured by uh, a wonderful singer who is a, a long-term member of our group who works with the puppets. She was singing very important songs in regards of healing the world through three things, uh, dedicated to the community and humanity and to the biblical uh, story. Uh, that was one of our touring shows from Hanover to Berlin. We performed this piece twice. Now the exhibition featured about 18 artists from four different nations in the summertime and uh, in November right here we have the most important folks who are, I'm presenting them that I, I brought excerpts from uh, this you know fall for the trolley tour for the Phantom Gallery to present. Talk a little bit about why you take these tours and these adventures. Well, International Art Adventures is one of the platforms that uh, we developed together with uh, Phantom Gallery a long time ago. And uh, I, I'm very uh, happy to have met Alpha Bouton, who had initiated this whole movement with me a long time ago. She came to Berlin with us, with Ina Lunkenheimer, and we did a lot of wonderful things together in Berlin. Kind of developed this kind of international uh, exchange over time for many years. So uh, this is how it all started actually. Right, and um, we can talk about those, um, we call it uh, exploring explorations of uh, and the time that we spent and how we toured, but also um, the, the artist here in Chicago, when we go to um, some of the salons, you want to talk about that and the different artists that are, have been like the core group? The International Art Group Chicago, we are hosting salons in various neighborhoods here in Chicago to, uh, to create a, a deeper network between the different communities on the south side, the north side and the west side. And, uh, for a long, for many years, I've been, of course, you know, featuring these salons on the north side in Rogers Park. We all, I just finished the Glenwood Art Festival over there that we've been participating in for many years. Also having now salons at Oliver Gallery on uh, the near west side, uh, north west side, and uh, and hopefully we'll do some more salons maybe in the future with Phantom Gallery of, over here. On, in Bronzeville as well. Uh, now we're just um, having virtual tours and we're not open to the public so really thank you for coming out and wanting to do the virtual tour with us. Um, I have some work of your parents in the uh, Phantom Gallery. It's a part of the gallery collection. You want to talk about those pieces and yes. your parents? I'd like to talk about my father's work. His name is Hans Ulrich Buchwald. Uh, what we're looking at is his uh, very well-known uh, woodcuts and linen cuts. If you're looking here on the top, you see a, a typical woodcut. You see the structure of the wood that uh, you know it comes through through the printing process, and uh, he loves the natural uh, texture of the wood that shines through. So when he uh, he's carving out the image of the characters, the figure right here, uh, a male which is kind of facing away from us, uh, and his sort of a hunting dog who is like looking away and going into the wilderness, uh, he's interested to, to show the, you know, the, the dimension that uh, what's happening. He likes to be, go away from the uh, rectangular image. He always likes to kind of have a, a, an innovative shape that uh, is emphasizing different parts of the human figure. So if you're looking up, you, you know, it emphasizes something about the torso or the, the profile of the, uh, the face and uh, the masculinity of his you know, physical 
body. He was fascinated by people doing sports. He did a lot of weight sports. Uh, that's one of his series, but he had many different types of series and subject matters. Uh, and down here it's a typical lion cut. The lino cut doesn't have the, the grain of the, uh, the wood that you through, but it's more open, more fluid. You know, you can, you can cut in all kinds of ways into a, a lino. Uh, and the lino originated from a floor that was part of his, one of his jobs. He would work in a museum, and then he, uh, the, the lino floors were kind of disintegrating. So he thought, oh, what a great material. And so they gave it to him and he started to carve into it. And so he had a huge supply of lino. Again, you, know, you see the, uh, the connection between two characters uh, surrounded by uh, the lake right here, the, uh, the enjoyment of the two figures being close to, to one another, having intimacy, uh, two male figures. My father was a homosexual artist. And uh, it was always, you know, hard for my mom, you know, but she had to accept the situation, him being a gay, art, gay artist. He was long time uh, presented at Lee Gallery in Boys Town in Chicago, where he had his coming out after my mother had passed away. He let him, his beard grow along and he became like a hippie and he wore leather clothes and something. And so he, he could step out of his closet, so to speak. Here, you see, I talked earlier about the uh, a woman with the insect head <laughs> and uh, something that looks at first really pretty but if you look closely you see large insects crawling across the head. Uh, she looks very kind of uh, fancy. My mom, she was very bourgeois. She would love to dress up. She would wear beautiful uh, jewelry and things like that. She would love to be dressing up and, and mingle with the, the society in Hanover to connect him to different sponsors and the opera hours where we had performances. And then you had, uh, you know, so it's, this is it's a little bit of a homage my, to my mom. You know, my mother was Hella Buchwald, who was uh, also a very good painter. My mother was the opposite of my father. She would do very esoteric paintings, and they would transform into like these insects. There was this whole thing about the insect connection as a symbol for metamorphosis and the connection to the spiritual world. And my father was quite the opposite. He was more into the, you know, the kind of the the roughness of the, the, the energy of the, the sports people and the human characters or the humor of old folks and, and old folks' homes, uh, chatting, looking out of windows. He did a whole series about that. He did a whole thing about uh, playing uh, families where, you know, dogs were jumping, leaping in the air and things like that. He, he always had a great joy with his families. He was like a family character. He would encourage other artists to come to our house and sit around a round table. And that round table is our connecting part that's still there. So my two, two of my parents had passed away. So that's our story. Both of my parents had uh, many exhibitions in European countries like France and Spain and Italy. And, uh, and, and then they ventured out to Australia and to the United States. And my father became very known for his lino cuts and wood cuts. And uh, I'm very, I was very happy that uh, Alpha liked you know, my father's work that much. And she framed things here and they are part of the exhibition here as well. He always deals very often with nature. Uh, people in nature, people are uh, playfully uh, joining each other, swimming in a, in, a, in a cooling lake. It was a hot summer here in Chicago, so it was like the coolness of the water of the two gentlemen who were swimming and playing in the lake. Or uh, a man at hunt, you know, he has the whole thing about hunting in the wilderness. The man was a dog, that one thing. <laughs> or the, the feature, uh, large piece with the woman with the insect heads. My mother, she, she loved to have uh, a sun hat. You know, now it was really sunny in the summertime and you have to, you know, kind of protect your skin. And, you know, he, he was a little bit macabre sometimes. So if you look closely, you will see on top of the head, insects, large insects crawling across the head. 
He had a sense of a, he had kind of a dark sense of humor. Um, you know, and I really appreciate having the work, but you also are a legacy holder and you're passing on and holding on to the legacy of your family. And when we um, went um, to um, Hanover um, during that time, the city of Hanover had in um, all of the, it wasn't storage, but it was all of the masks and all of the, um, like a workshop and all of the catalogs and all of the sculptures and artwork in the top of this mall. You know. Yes, the city of Hanover is uh, has established sort of a support system, a non-for-profit for my father's uh, legacy, which consists of many sculptures and large uh, irregular shaped paintings and uh, the many, many big masks and puppets. And I get to always produce a mask spectacle every summer. We had to move the workshop from Pamela, you know, the big, over the big supermarket, the mall, and we had to move it to another place called the Teatrio, which is a puppet theater place for various puppet theater companies now on the north side of uh, Hanover. And we're happy to be there a few more years. But then we have when to... we're taking on these collections, yes. you know, of our family, um, and that's why I thought it would be good for you to talk about that um, and your dual citizenship and how you're here in the United States. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, legal re resident here in the United States and uh, I'm grateful for that situation as you know now it's really hard to travel these days. I'm uh, entitled to travel between the continents which is wonderful uh, to continue the, the dialogue between the different countries and uh, to develop that passion for international travel again, which is you know a little delayed nowadays. But we, we hope to you know to encourage folks to think positive and uh, with our art projects again to bring uh, energy to the world to really you know go out and bring to life again the culture of the puppets and the, uh, the mass theater performances that we've done so many years. Last year we couldn't do it, so that we did one here at the, United, uh, the University of, uh, the Eastern University. Mm -hmm. In the summertime there was not much to do, but we did uh, the Ocean Blues performance with big uh, butterfly masks. That was really fun. Right, and you have that, and we'll show um, that image mm -hmm. um, when we do our PowerPoint to show our audience um, your work. Um, let's move on and talk about the artists that you're going to present in November okay. and um, the gallery that um, is featuring them mm -hmm. in, um, in Germany and, and our cross-culture. That sounds wonderful. So yes, um, I every time I'm in Europe I have the opportunity to meet folks who you know, are joining in to the project. It's like a fluid kind of process. And I, this summertime, we had new artists who joined us for the Ocean Number no. Three exhibition. A whole group of wonderful Berlin artists. Uh, Anke Aus is one of them, who is my assistant director, who have met uh, 2019. She does uh, a huge variety of wonderful work. She had traveled, you know, uh, internationally. She had been in Asia as well. So she, her work is. Uh, quite inspired by Australian pointillism sometimes. Uh, then that was, you know, one of her works that was featured again this summer in, in the Baikoch Gallery. Baikoch Gallery uh, is the name and based on Cem Koch, who is the owner of the gallery. He originally comes from Turkey and uh, for several years now he has been uh, the the curator or organizer was along with myself to organize the international art exchange there. He also presents a quite famous artist, Tim Ulrichs, uh, who is known for his conceptual art and who is known at the Sprengel Museum, in a very popular museum in Hanover. The Sprengel Museum features work, you know, internationally uh, on a large scale and um, is known for the Kurt Schwitter collection and the whole Fluxus movement. This, uh, this November we have 
artist, uh, one of them is um, originally from England, his name is Nigel Peckham. And, uh, you know, he, his work is, uh, is quite lively, he's a wonderful painter, he uh, has uh, studied in London and in Braunschweig. And then he, now he has been a teaching artist for many years, he's quite known in Hanover for his uh, large scale paintings, very colorful paintings. Uh, and and his, this work that we're going to see here is called In Search of Nelson. Uh, the other artist who is now presented in November, his name is Knut Go, a long-term friend of mine who uh, I've actually met him before. You know, he actually had performed with me the uh, Uptown uh, Beacon Street Gallery with, uh, you know, under the uh, direction of Jackie Taylor, who is a known uh, name in the African American community. Uh, in 1990, long time ago actually, we did a performance called The Spirit a long time ago, but that goes far, far away. <laughs> Continue these friendships with my long-term friends in Germany, therefore I'm able to, to deeper develop these networks. And then of course we have a, a new artist, her name is uh, Katrin Hamann. She makes very large-scale uh, paintings and this one painting is called uh, Homage à Picasso. It's a brown shade, uh, you know, she's, she's interested in the whole thing about different cultural backgrounds as well. Uh, the brown uh, face, uh, a small canvas, I had to like carry things that I was able to, to carry over the ocean. She works really on a large scale. She has a little gallery in Hanover, on the east side of Hanover, it's called the Atelier Harman. And she features various artists as well. And she's also featured here in this November exhibition. And then um, Micha Hall, but his artist name is Fonen, M-N-M-P-N, it's a very strange name. Uh, Sunset Scarlet, the collage that you see over there. And uh, then you have uh, a work by myself, which is uh, uh, Wild River Girls, and that's the green painting of the In terms of the style of work, is collecting in different media. Yes. And um, the reason why we carry minimalist work in our suitcases when we travel, because it's export, <laughs> import rules about shipping art and paying for that and getting Absolutely. it in customs. Yes. So whenever we travel, we take art that is portable, you know, and we can put it in a suitcase and it can get through customs because it was, it's like private. Mm -hmm. um, if we, sh uh, some of the artists made the mistake of shipping art, and the curator couldn't pick it up from customs. Um, I was in another exhibition called uh, like the Men Art Club, and a group of artists and curators from India, they had to pay ten thousand dollars just euro just to get their work out of customs because they had them all shipped. So um, one of the things that we do here with the Phantom Gallery and with the International Art Group is that the work has to be the size that we can carry in a suitcase and bring it back and forth across the, the ocean and not have to pay those kind of fees. And stuff. Yes. So the work we'll, you'll see um, in this exhibition, they're minimalist and they're small pieces and the pieces are all under um, 12 by 14 you know, pieces, but the artists, as Mariana described, you know, they paint in large scale. Simon Parfumant, uh, you know, he's a pretty uh, amazing photographer, so we have photography as well as part of the media, and um, Chem Koch himself is a filmmaker, and we did start working on a trailer for the November show with uh, Shalaka Kulkani, who is an Indian artist, she lives in Elgin, and she actually, you know, Performs in the trailer for this particular show. He's going to send us a link. You can see it eventually. Great. Yes. So uh, those are the artists. I think one of the things is uh, that you know the what was very important is that we have the multicultural aspect of our, our shows to really you know feature each other, have the dialogue of cultures, uh, have an open-minded cult, uh, cultural dialogue, and also have an interdisciplinary approach to include dance, uh, theater, film, uh, performance, mixed media, installation, and uh, if you know we have another you know option for maybe next summer in 2022 
when things have not become more normal, to have another symposium of the arts where people actually all can create something together and collaborate.